Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to go over all the information you will need to know for the AP World History Modern exam. We're gonna look at all nine units and all 71 topics that College Board covers so you are prepared to do your best on the AP exam. We're gonna talk about the essential knowledge points and historical developments that you need to know for the exam. You should think of this more as an audiobook. Um, I'm just gonna have slides that list the topics from each unit, but you can listen to this the night before the exam, a couple hours before the exam, just to get this information soaked into your brain. Developments in East Asia from 1200 to 1450. Empires and states in Afro-Eurasia and the Americas demonstrated continuity, innovation, and diversity in the 13th century. This included the Song Dynasty of China, which utilized traditional methods of Confucianism and an imperial bureaucracy to maintain and justify its rule. Chinese cultural traditions continued and they influenced neighboring regions. Buddhism and its core beliefs continued to shape societies in Asia and included a variety of branches, schools, and practices. The economy of Song China became increasingly commercialized while continuing to depend on free peasant and artisanal labor. The economy of Song China flourished as a result of increased productive capacity, expanding trade networks, and innovations in agriculture and manufacturing. Developments in Dar al-Islam from 1200 to 1450. Islam, Judaism, Christianity, and the core beliefs and practices of these religions continue to shape societies in Africa and Asia. As the Abbasid Caliphate fragmented, new Islamic political entities emerged, most of which were dominated by Turkic peoples. These states demonstrated continuity innovation, and diversity. Muslim rule continued to expand to many parts of Afro-Eurasia due to military expansion, and Islam subsequently expanded through the activities of merchants, missionaries, and Sufis. Muslim states and empires encouraged significant intellectual innovations and transfers. Developments in South and Southeast Asia from 1200 to 1450. Hinduism, Islam, and Buddhism and their core beliefs and practices continue to shape societies in South and Southeast Asia. State formation and development demonstrated continuity, innovation, and diversity, including the new Hindu and Buddhist states that emerged in South and Southeast Asia. State building in the Americas. In the Americas, as in Afro-Eurasia, State systems demonstrated continuity, innovation, and diversity, and expanded in scope and reach. State building in Africa. In Africa, as in Eurasia and the Americas, state systems demonstrated continuity, innovation, and diversity, and expanded in scope and reach. Developments in Europe from 1200 to 1450. Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and the core beliefs and practices of these religions continued to shape societies in Europe. Europe was politically fragmented and characterized by decentralized monarchies, feudalism, and the manorial system. Europe was largely an agricultural society dependent on free and coerced labor, including serfdom. Comparison in the period from 1200 to 1450. State formation and development demonstrated continuity, innovation, and diversity in various regions. As the Abbasid Caliphate fragmented, new Islamic political entities emerged, most of which were dominated by Turkic peoples. These states demonstrated continuity, innovation, and diversity. Empires and states in Afro-Eurasia and the Americas demonstrated continuity, innovation, and diversity in the 13th century. This included the Song Dynasty of China, which utilized traditional methods of Confucianism and an imperial bureaucracy to maintain and justify its rule. 
state formation and development demonstrated continuity, innovation, and diversity, including the new Hindu and Buddhist states that emerged in South and Southeast Asia. In the Americas, as in Afro-Eurasia, state systems demonstrated continuity, innovation, and diversity, and expanded in scope and reach. In Africa, as in Eurasia and the Americas, state systems demonstrated continuity, innovation, and diversity, and expanded in scope and reach. Unit two, we're talking about the networks of exchange, the Silk Roads. Improved commercial practices led to an increased volume of trade and expanded the geographical range of existing trade routes, including the Silk Roads, promoting the growth of powerful new trading cities. The growth of interregional trade in luxury goods was encouraged by innovations and previously existing transportation and commercial technologies, including the caravanserai, forms of credit, and the development of money economies. Demand for luxury goods increased in Afro-Eurasia, Chinese, Persian, and Indian artisans and merchants expanded their production of textiles and porcelains for export. Manufacture of iron and steel expanded in China. The Mongol Empire and the making of the modern world. Empires collapsed in different regions of the world and in some areas were replaced by new imperial states, including the Mongol Khanat. The expansion of empires, including the Mongols, facilitated Afro-Eurasian trade and communication as new people were drawn into their conquerors' economies and trade routes. Interregional contracts and conflicts between states and empires, including the Mongols, encouraged significant technological and cultural transfers. Exchange in the Indian Ocean. Improved transportation technologies and commercial practices led to an increased volume of trade and expanded the geographical range of existing trade routes, including the Indian Ocean, promoting the growth of powerful new trading cities. The growth of interregional trade in luxury goods was encouraged by significant innovations in previously existing transportation and commercial technologies, including the use of the compass, the astrolabe, and larger ship designs. The Indian Ocean Trading Network fostered the growth of states. In key places along important trade routes, merchants set up diasporic communities where they introduced their own cultural traditions into the indigenous cultures and in turn, indigenous cultures influenced merchant cultures. Interregional contracts and conflicts between states and empires encouraged significant technological and cultural transfers, including during Chinese maritime activity led by Ming Admiral Ziding. The expansion and intensification of long distance trade routes often depended on environmental knowledge, including advanced knowledge of the monsoon winds, trans Saharan trade routes. The growth of interregional trade was encouraged by innovations in existing transportation technologies. Improved transportation technologies and commercial practices led to an increased volume of trade and expanded the geographical range of existing trade routes, including the Trans-Saharan Trade Network. The expansion of empires, including Mali and West Africa, facilitated Afro-Eurasian trade and communication as new people were drawn into the economies and trade networks. Cultural consequences of connectivity. Increased cross-cultural interactions resulted in the diffusion of literacy, artistic, and cultural traditions, as well as scientific and technological innovations. The fate of cities varied greatly, with periods of significant decline and periods of increased urbanization buoyed by rising productivity and expanding trade networks. As exchange networks intensified, an increased number of travelers within Afro-Eurasia wrote about their travels. Environmental consequences of connectivity. There was continued diffusion of crops and pathogens with epidemic diseases, including the bubonic plague along trade routes. Comparison of economic exchange. A deepening and widening of networks of human interaction within and across regions 
contributed to cultural, technological, and biological diffusion within and between various societies. Improved commercial practices led to an increased volume of trade and expanded the geographical range of existing trade routes, including the Silk Roads, promoting the growth of powerful new trading cities. The growth of interregional trade in luxury goods was encouraged by innovations in previously existing transportation and commercial technologies, including the caravanserai, forms of credit, and the development of money economies. Changes in trade networks resulted from and stimulated increasing productive capacity with important implications for social and gender structures and environmental processes. Demand for luxury goods increased in Afro-Eurasia, Chinese, Persian, and Indian artisans, and merchants expanded their production of textiles and porcelains for export. Manufacture of iron and steel expanded in China. Land-based empires. Empires expand. Imperial expansion relied on the increased use of gunpowder, cannons, and armed trade to establish large empires in both hemispheres. Land empires included the Manchu in Central and East Asia, the Mongol in South and Central Asia, the Ottoman in Southern Europe, the Middle East and North Africa, and the Safavids in the Middle East. Political and religious disputes led to rivalries and conflicts between states. Administration. Recruitment and use of bureaucratic elites, as well as the development of military professionals became more common among rulers who wanted to maintain centralized control over their populations and resources. Rulers continued to use religious ideas, art, and monumental architecture to legitimize their rule. Rulers used tribute collection, tax farming, and innovative tax collection systems to generate revenue in order to forward state power and expansion. Belief systems. The Protestant Reformation marked a break with existing Christian traditions, and both the Protestant and Catholic Reformations contributed to the growth of Christianity. Political rivalries between the Ottoman and Safavid empires intensified the split within Islam between Sunni and Shiite. Sikhism developed in South Asia in a context of interactions between Hinduism and Islam. Comparison in land-based empires. The interconnection of the Eastern and Western hemispheres made possible by transoceanic voyaging transformed trade and had a significant social impact on the world. In some cases, the increase and intensification of interactions between newly connected hemispheres expanded the reach and further development of existing religions and contributed to religious conflicts in the development of syncretic belief systems and practices. Empires achieved increased scope and influence around the world, shaping and being shaped by the diverse populations they incorporated. Imperial expansion relied increased use of gunpowder, cannons, and armed trade to establish large empires in both hemispheres. Land empires included the Manchu in Central and East Asia, Mughal in South and Central Asia, Ottoman in Southern Europe, the Middle East and North Africa, and the Safavids in the Middle East. Political and religious disputes led to rivalries and conflict between states. Unit 4, Transoceanic Interconnections, Technological Innovations from 1450 to 1750. Knowledge, scientific learning, and technology from the classical, Islamic, and Asian worlds spread, facilitating European technological developments and innovation. The developments included the production of new tools, innovations in ship designs, and an improved understanding of regional wind and currents patterns all of which made transoceanic travel and trade possible. Exploration, causes and events from 1450 to 1750. New state-supported transoceanic maritime exploration occurred in this period. Portuguese development of maritime technology and navigational skills led to increased travel to and trade with Africa and Asia, 
and resulted in the construction of a global trading post empire. Spanish sponsorship of the voyages of Columbus and subsequent voyages across the Atlantic and Pacific dramatically increased European interest, transoceanic travel and trade. North Atlantic crossings were undertaken under English, French, and Dutch sponsorship, often with the goal of finding alternative sailing routes to Asia. Colombian exchange. The new connections between the Eastern and Western hemispheres resulted in the exchange of new plants, animals, and diseases known as the Colombian exchange. European colonization of the Americas led to the unintentional transfer of disease vectors, including mosquitoes and rats, and the spread of diseases that were endemic in the Eastern hemisphere, including smallpox, measles, and malaria. Some of these diseases substantially reduced the indigenous populations with catastrophic effects in many areas. American foods became staple crops in various parts of Europe, Asia, and Africa. Cash crops were grown primarily on plantations with coerced labor and were exported mostly to Europe and the Middle East. Afro-Eurasian fruit trees, grains, sugar, and domesticated animals were brought by Europeans to the Americas while other foods were brought by African enslaved persons. Populations in Afro-Eurasia benefited nutritionally from the increased diversity of American food crops. Maritime empires established. Europeans established new trading posts in Africa and Asia, which proved profitable for the rulers and merchants involved in new global trade networks. Some Asian states sought to limit the disruptive economic and cultural effects of European dominated long distance trade by adopting restrictive or isolationist trade policies. Driven largely by political, religious and economic rivalries, European states established new maritime empires, including the Portuguese, Spanish, Dutch, French and British. The expansion of maritime trading networks fostered the growth of states in Africa, including the Asante and the Kingdom of the Congo, whose participation in trading networks led to an increase in their influence. Despite some disruption and restructuring due to the arrival of Portuguese, Spanish, and Dutch merchants, existing trade networks in the Indian Ocean continued to flourish and included intra-Asian trade and Asian merchants. Newly developed colonial economies in the Americas largely depended on agriculture, utilized existing labor systems, including the Incan Mita, and introduced new labor systems, including chattel slavery, indentured servitude, and encomienda and hacienda systems. Enslavement in Africa continued in its traditional forms, including incorporation of enslaved persons into households and the export of enslaved persons to the Mediterranean and the Indian Ocean regions. The growth of the plantation economy increased the demand for enslaved labor in the Americas, leading to significant demographic, social, and cultural changes. Maritime empires maintained and developed. Mercantilist policies and practices were used by European rulers to expand and control their economies and claim overseas territories. Joint stock companies influenced, influenced by these mercantilist principles were used by rulers and merchants to finance exploration and were used by rulers to compete against one another in global trade. Economic disputes led to rivalries and conflict between states. The Atlantic trading system involved the movement of goods, wealth, and labor, including enslaved persons. The new global circulation of goods was facilitated by chartered European monopoly companies and the global flow of silver, especially from Spanish colonies in the Americas, which was used to purchase Asian goods for the Atlantic markets and satisfy Chinese demand for silver. Regional markets continued to flourish in Afro-Eurasia by using established commercial practices and new transoceanic and regional shipping services developed by European merchants. Peasant and artisan labor continued and intensified in many regions as the demand for food and consumer goods increased. Some notable gender and family restructuring occurred, including demographic changes in Africa that resulted from the trade of enslaved persons. 
the Atlantic trading system involved the movement of labor, including enslaved persons, and the mixing of African, American, and European cultures and peoples, with all parties contributing to this cultural synthesis. In some cases, the increase and the intensification of interactions between newly connected hemispheres expanded the reach and furthered the development of existing religions and contributed to religious conflicts and the development of syncretic belief systems and practices. Internal and external challenges to state power from 1450 to 1750. State expansion and centralization led to resistance from an array of social, political, and economic groups on a local level. Enslaved persons challenged existing authorities in the Americas through organized resistance. Changing social hierarchies from 1450 to 1750. Many states, such as the Mughal and Ottoman empires, adopted practices to accommodate the ethnic and religious diversity of their subjects or to utilize the economic, political, and military contributions of different ethnic or religious groups. In other cases, states suppressed diversity or limited certain groups' roles in society, politics, or the economy. Imperial conquests and widening global economic opportunities contributed to the formation of new political and economic elites, including in China with the transition to the Qing dynasty and the Americas with the rise of the Casta system. The power of existing political and economic elites fluctuated as the elites confronted new challenges to their ability to affect the policies of the increasingly powerful monarchs and leaders. Continuity and change from 1450 to 1750. The interconnection of the Eastern and Western hemispheres made possible by transoceanic voyaging, transformed trade and had a significant social impact on the world. Knowledge, scientific learning, and technology from the classical, Islamic, and Asian worlds spread, facilitating European technological developments and innovation. The developments included the production of new tools, innovations in ship designs, and an improved understanding of regional wind and currents patterns, all of which made transoceanic travel and trade possible. Although the world's productive systems continued to be heavily centered on agriculture, major changes occurred in agricultural labor, the system and locations of manufacturing, gender and social structures, and environmental processes. The demand for labor intensified as a result of the growing global demand for raw materials and finished products. Traditional peasant agriculture increased and changed in nature. Plantations expanded, and the Atlantic slave trade developed and intensified. Empires achieved increased scope and influence around the world, shaping and being shaped by the diverse populations they incorporated. Economic disputes led to rivalries and conflicts between states. Unit five, revolution, the enlightenment. Enlightenment philosophies applied new ways of understanding and empiricist approaches to both the natural world and human relationships. They also re-examined the role that religion played in public life and emphasized the importance of reason. Philosophers developed new political ideas about the individual, natural rights, and the social contract. The rise and diffusion of enlightenment thought that questioned established traditions in all areas of life often preceded revolutions and rebellions against existing governments. Nationalism also became a major force shaping the historical development of states and empires. Enlightenment ideas and religious ideas influenced various reform movements. These reform movements contributed to the expansion of rights as seen in expanded suffrage, the abolition of slavery, and the end of serfdom. Demands for women's suffrage and an emergent feminism challenged political and gender hierarchies, nationalism and revolutions in the period from 1750 to 1900. People around the world developed a new sense of commonality based on language, religion, social customs, and territory. This was sometimes harnessed by governments to foster a sense of unity. The 18th century marked the beginning of an intense period of revolution and rebellion against existing governments, 
leading to the establishment of new nation states around the world. Discontent with monarchist and imperial rule encouraged the development of systems of government and various ideologies, including democracy and 19th century liberalism. Colonial subjects in the Americas led a series of rebellions inspired by democratic ideals. The American Revolution and its successful establishment of a republic, the United States of America, was a model and inspiration for a number of the revolutions that followed. The American Revolution, the Haitian Revolution, and the Latin American independence movements facilitated the emergence of independent states in the Americas. The ideas of Enlightenment philosophers, as reflected in revolutionary documents, including the American Declaration of Independence during the American Revolution, the French Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen during the French Revolution, and Bolivar's Letter from Jamaica on the eve of the Latin American revolutions influenced resistance to existing political authority, often in pursuit of independence and democratic ideals. Newly imagined national communities often linked this new national identity with borders of the state, and in some cases, nationalists challenged boundaries or sought unification of fragmented regions. Industrial revolution begins. A variety of factors contributed to the growth of industrial production and eventually resulted in the Industrial Revolution, including proximity to waterways, access to river and canals, geographical distribution of coal, iron, and timber, urbanization, improved agricultural productivity, legal protection of private property, access to foreign resources, and accumulation of capital. The development of the factory system concentrated production in a single location and led to an increased degree of specialization of labor. Industrialization spreads in the period from 1750 to 1900. The rapid development of steam powered industrial production in European countries and the US contributed to the increase in these regions' share of global manufacturing during the first industrial revolution. While Middle Eastern and Asian countries continued to produce manufactured goods, these regions' share in global manufacturing declined. As new methods of industrial production became more common in parts of Northwestern Europe, they spread to other parts of Europe and the United States, Russia, and Japan. Technology of the Industrial Age. The development of machines, including steam engines and the internal combustion engine, made it possible to take advantage of both existing and vast newly discovered resources of energy stored in fossil fuels, specifically coal and oil. The fossil fuels revolution greatly increased the energy available to human societies. The second industrial revolution led to new methods in the production of steel, chemicals, electricity, and precision machinery during the second half of the 19th century. Railroads, steamships, and the telegraph made exploration, development, and communication possible in interior regions globally, which led to increased trade and migration. Industrialization, government's role from 1750 to 1900. As the influence of the Industrial Revolution grew, a small number of states and governments promoted their own state-sponsored visions of industrialization. The expansion of U.S. and European influence in Asia led to internal reform in Japan that supported industrialization and led to the growing regional power of Japan in the Meiji era, economic developments and innovations in the industrial age. Western European countries began abandoning mercantilism and adopting free trade policies, partly in response to the growing acceptance of Adam Smith's the theories of laissez-faire capitalism and free markets. The global nature of trade and production contributed to the proliferation of large-scale transnational businesses that relied on new practices in banking and finance. The development of industrial capitalism led to increased standards of living for some, and to continued improvement in manufacturing methods that increase the availability, affordability, and variety of consumer goods. 
reactions to the industrial economy from 1750 to 1900. In response to the social and economic changes brought about by industrial capitalism, some governments, organizations, and individuals promoted various types of political, social, educational, and urban forms. In industrialized states, many workers organized themselves, often in labor unions, to improve working conditions, limit hours, and gain higher wages. Workers' movements and political parties emerged in different areas, promoting alternative visions of society. Discontent with established power structures encouraged the development of various ideologies, including those espoused by Karl Marx and the ideas of socialism and communism. In response to the expansion of industrializing states, some governments in Asia and Africa, including the Ottoman Empire and China, sought to reform and modernize their economies and militaries. Reform efforts were often resisted, resisted by some members of government or established elite groups. Society and the Industrial Age New social classes, including the middle class and the industrial working class developed. While women and often children in working class families typically held wage earning jobs to supplement their family's income, middle class women who did not have the same economic demands to satisfy were increasingly limited to roles in the household or roles focused on child development. The rapid urbanization that accompanied global capitalism at times led to a variety of challenges, including pollution, poverty, increased crime, public health crises, housing shortages, and insufficient infrastructure to accommodate urban growth. Continuity and change in the industrial age. The development of industrial capitalism led to the increased standards of living for some and to continued improvement in manufacturing methods that increase the availability, affordability, and variety of consumer goods. Railroads, steamships, and the telegraph made exploration, development, and communication possible in interior regions globally, which led to increased trade and migration. The 18th century marked the beginning of an intense period of revolution and rebellion against existing governments, leading to the establishment of new nation states around the world. Enlightenment philosophies applied new ways of understanding and empiricist approaches to both the natural world and human relationships. They also re-examined the role that religion played in public life and emphasized the importance of reason. Philosophers developed new political ideas about the individual, natural rights, and the social contract. The rise and diffusion of enlightenment thought that questioned established traditions in all areas of life often preceded revolutions and rebellions against existing governments. Nationalism also became a major force shaping the historical development of states and empires. Unit six, the consequences of industrialization. Rationales for imperialism from 1750 to 1900. A range of cultural, religious, and racial ideologies were used to justify imperialism, including social Darwinism, nationalism, the concept of the civilizing mission, and the desire to religiously convert indigenous people. State expansion from 1750 to 1900. Some states with existing colonies strengthened their control over those colonies, and in some cases assumed direct control over colonies previously held by non-state entities. European states, as well as the United States and Japan, acquired territories throughout Asia and the Pacific, while Spanish and Portuguese influence declined. Many European states used both warfare and diplomacy to expand their empires in Africa. Europeans established settler colonies in some parts of their empires. The United States, Russia, and Japan expanded their land holdings by conquering and settling neighboring territories. Indigenous responses to state expansion from 1750 to 1900. Increasing questions about political authority and growing nationalism contributed to anti-colonial movements. Anti-imperial resistance took various forms, including direct resistance within empires and the creation of new states on the peripheries. 
Increasing discontent with imperial rule led to rebellions, some of which were influenced by religious ideas. Global economic development from 1750 to 1900. The need for raw materials for factories and increased food supply through the growing population in urban centers led to the growth of export economies around the world that specialized in commercial extraction of natural resources and the production of food and industrial crops. The profits from these raw materials were used to purchase finished goods. Economic imperialism from 1750 to 1900. Industrialized states and businesses within those states practice economic imperialism primarily in Asia and Latin America. Trade in some commodities was organized in a way that gave merchants and companies based in Europe and the US a distinct economic advantage. Causes of migration in the interconnected world. Migration in many cases was influenced by changes in demographics in both industrialized and unindustrialized societies that presented challenges to existing patterns of living. Because of the nature of new modes of transportation, both internal and external migrants increasingly relocated to cities. This pattern contributed to the significant global urbanization of the 19th century. The new methods of transportation also allowed for many migrants to return periodically or permanently to their home societies. Many individuals chose freely to relocate, often in search of work. The new global capitalist economy continued to rely on coerced and semi-coerced labor migration, including enslavement, Chinese and Indian indentured servitude and convict labor. Effects of migration. Migrants tended to be male, leaving women to take on new roles in the home society that had been formerly occupied by men. Migrants often created ethnic enclaves in different parts of the world that helped transplant their culture into new environments. Receiving societies did not always embrace immigrants as seen in the various degrees of ethnic and racial prejudice and the way states attempted to regulate the increased flow of people across their borders. Causation in the Imperial Age. The development of industrial capitalism led to increased standards of living for some and to continued improvement in manufacturing methods that increase the availability, affordability, and variety of consumer goods. As states industrialized, they also expanded existing overseas empires and established new colonies and transoceanic relationships. The 18th century marked the beginning of an intense period of revolution and rebellion against existing governments, leading to the establishment of new nation states around the world. As a result of the emergence of transoceanic empires and a global capitalist economy, Migration patterns changed dramatically and the numbers of migrants increased significantly. Unit seven, global conflict. Shifting power after 1900. The West dominated the global political order at the beginning of the 20th century, but both land-based and maritime empires gave way to new states by the century's end. The older land-based Ottoman, Russian, and Qing empires collapsed due to a combination of internal and external factors. These changes in Russia eventually led to a communist revolution. States around the world challenged the existing political and social order, including the Mexican revolution that arose as a result of political crisis. Causes of World War I. The causes of World War I included imperialist expansion and competition for resources. In addition, territorial and regional conflicts combined with a flawed alliance system and intense nationalism to escalate the tensions into global conflict. Conducting World War I. World War I was the first total war. Governments used a variety of strategies, including political propaganda, art, media, and intensified forms of nationalism to mobilize populations, both in the home countries and the colonies, for the purpose of waging war. 
new military technology led to increased levels of wartime casualties. The economy in the interwar period. Following World War I and the onset of the Great Depression, governments began to take a more active role in economic life. In the Soviet Union, the government controlled the national economy through the five-year plans, often implementing repressive policies with negative repercussions for the population. Unresolved tensions after World War I. Between the two world wars, Western and Japanese imperial states predominantly maintained control over colonial holdings. In some cases, they gained additional territories through conquest or treaty settlement, and in other cases, faced anti-imperial resistance. Causes of World War II. The causes of World War II included the unsustainable peace settlement after World War I, the global economic crisis engendered by the Great Depression, continued imperialist aspirations, and especially the rise to power of fascist and totalitarian regimes that resulted in the aggressive militarism of Nazi Germany under Adolf Hitler. Conducting World War II. World War II was a total war. Governments use a variety of strategies, including political propaganda, art, media, and intensified forms of nationalism to mobilize populations, both in the home countries and the colonies or former colonies for the purpose of waging war. Governments used ideologies, including fascism and communism to mobilize all of their states' resources for war and in the case of totalitarian states to repress basic freedoms and dominate many aspects of daily life during the course of the conflicts and beyond. New military technologies and new tactics, including the atomic bomb, firebombing, and the waging of total war led to increased levels of wartime casualties. Mass atrocities after 1900. The rise of extremist groups in power led to the attempted destruction of specific populations, notably the Nazi killing of the Jews in the Holocaust during World War II and to other atrocities, acts of genocide, or ethnic violence. Causation in global conflict. Causation in global conflict. Rapid advances in science and technology altered the understanding of the universe and the natural world and led to advances in communication, transportation, industry, agriculture, and medicine. Peoples and states around the world challenged the existing political and social order in varying ways, leading to unprecedented worldwide conflicts. The West dominated the global political order at the beginning of the 20th century, but both land-based and maritime empires gave way to new states by the century's end. The older land-based Ottoman, Russian, and King empires collapsed due to a combination of internal and external factors. These changes in Russia eventually led to communist revolution. States around the world challenged the existing political and social order, including the Mexican revolution that arose as a result of political crisis. Unit eight, Cold War and decolonization. Setting the stage for the Cold War and decolonization. Hopes for greater self-government were largely unfulfilled following World War I. However, in the years following World War II, increasing anti-imperialist sentiment contributed to the dissolution of empires and the restructuring of states. Technological and economic gains experienced during World War II by the victorious nations shifted the global balance of power. The Cold War. The global balance of economic and political power shifted during and after World War II and rapidly evolved into the Cold War. The democracy of the United States and the authoritarian communist Soviet Union emerged as superpowers, which led to ideological conflict and a power struggle between capitalism and communism across the globe. Groups and individuals, including the non-aligned movement, opposed and promoted alternatives to the existing economic, political, and social orders. Effects of the Cold War. The Cold War produced new military alliances, including NATO and the Warsaw Pact, and led to nuclear proliferation and proxy wars between and within 
post-colonial states in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. Spread of communism after 1900. As a result of internal tension and Japanese aggression, Chinese communists seized power. These changes in China eventually led to communist revolution. In communist China, the government controlled the national economy through the great leap forward, often implementing repressive policies with negative repercussions for the population. Movements to redistribute land and resources developed within states in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, sometimes advocating communism or socialism. Decolonization after 1900. Nationalist leaders and parties in Asia and Africa sought varying degrees of autonomy within or independence from imperial rule. After the end of World War II, some colonies negotiated their independence while others achieved independence through armed struggle. Regional, religious, and ethnic movements challenged colonial rule and inherited imperial boundaries. Some of these movements advocated for autonomy. Newly independent states. The redrawing of political boundaries after the withdrawal of formal colonial authorities led to the creation of new states. The redrawing of political boundaries in some cases led to conflict as well as population displacement and or resettlements, including those related to the partition of India and the creation of the state of Israel. In newly independent states after World War II, governments often took on a strong role in guiding economic life to promote development. The migration of former colonial subjects to imperial metropoles, the former colonizing country, usually in the major cities, maintained cultural and economic ties between the colony and the metropole, even after the dissolution of empires. Global resistance to established order after 1900. Although conflict dominated much of the 20th century, many individuals and groups, including states, opposed this trend. Some individuals and groups, however, intensified the conflicts. Groups and individuals challenged the many wars of the century, and some, such as Mohandas Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., and Nelson Mandela, promoted the practice of nonviolence as a way to bring about political change. Militaries and militarized states often responded to the proliferation of conflicts in ways that further intensified conflict. Some movements used violence against civilians in an effort to achieve political aims. End of the Cold War. Advances in US military and technological development, the Soviet Union's costly and ultimately failed invasion of Afghanistan, and public discontent and economic weakness in communist countries led to the end of the Cold War and the collapse of the Soviet Union. Causation in the age of the Cold War and decolonization. Peoples and states around the world challenged the existing political and social order in varying ways, leading to unprecedented worldwide conflicts. Hopes for greater self-government were largely unfulfilled following World War I. However, in the years following the World War II, increasing anti-imperialist sentiment contributed to the dissolution of empires and the restructuring of states. The Cold War conflict extended beyond its basic ideological origins to have profound effects on economic, political, social, and cultural aspects of global events. The role of the state and the domestic economy varied, and new institutions of global association emerged and continued to develop throughout the century. States responded in a variety of ways to the economic challenges of the 20th century. Unit 9, Globalization. Advances in technology and exchange after 1900. New modes of communication, including radio communication, cellular communication, and the internet, as well as transportation, including air travel and shipping containers, reduce the problem of geographic distance. Energy technologies, including the use of petroleum and nuclear power, raise productivity and increase the production of material goods. More effective forms of birth control gave women greater control over fertility, transformed reproductive practices and contributed to declining rates of fertility in much of the world. 
the green revolution in commercial agriculture increased productivity and sustained the Earth's growing population as it spread chemically and genetically modified forms of agriculture. Medical innovations, including vaccines and antibiotics, increase the ability of humans to survive and live longer lives. Technological advances and limitations after 1900, disease. Diseases, as well as medical and scientific developments, had significant effects on populations around the world. Diseases associated with poverty persisted, while other diseases emerged as new epidemics and threats to human populations, in some cases leading to social disruption. These outbreaks spurred technological and medical advances. Some diseases occurred at higher incidence merely because of increased longevity. Technological Advances, Debates About the Environment After 1900. As human activity contributed to deforestation, desertification, a decline in air quality, and increased consumption of the world's supply of fresh water, humans competed over these and other resources more intensely than ever before. The release of greenhouse gases and pollutants into the atmosphere contributed to debates about the nature and causes of climate change. Economics in the Global Age. In a trend accelerated by the end of the Cold War, many governments encouraged free market ec economic policies and promoted economic liberalization in the late 20th century. In the late 20th century, revolutions in information and communications technology led to the growth of knowledge economies in some regions. While industrial production and manufacturing were increasingly situated in Asia and Latin America. Changing economic institutions, multinational corporations, and regional trade agreements reflected the spread of principles and practices associated with free market economics throughout the world. Calls for reform and responses after 1900. Rights-based discourses challenged old assumptions about race, class, gender, and religion. In much of the world, access to education as well as participation in new political and professional roles became more inclusive in terms of race, class, gender, and religion. Movements throughout the world protested the inequality of the environmental and economic consequences of global integration. Globalized culture after 1900. Political and social changes of the 20th century led to changes in the arts and in the second half of the century, popular and consumer culture became more global. Arts, entertainment, and popular culture increasingly reflected the influence of a globalized society. Consumer culture became globalized and transcended national borders. Resistance to globalization after 1900. Responses to rising cultural and economic globalization took a variety of forms. Institutions developing in a globalized world. New international organizations, including the United Nations, formed with the stated goal of maintaining world peace and facilitating internal cooperation. Continuity and change in a globalized world. Rapid advances in science and technology altered the understanding of the universe and the natural world and led to advances in communication, transportation, industry, agriculture, and medicine. New modes of communication, including radio communication, cellular communication, and the internet, as well as transportation, including air travel and shipping containers, reduced the problem of geographic distance. Energy technologies, including the use of petroleum, and nuclear power raised productivity and increased the production of material goods. More effective forms of birth control gave women greater control over fertility, transformed reproductive practices, and contributed to declining rates of fertility in much of the world. The Green Revolution and commercial agriculture increased productivity and sustained the Earth's growing population as it spread chemically and genetically modified forms of agriculture. Medical innovations, including vaccines and antibiotics, increase the ability of humans to survive and live longer lives. States responded in a variety of ways to the economic challenges of the 20th century. 
rights-based discourses challenged old assumptions about race, class, gender, and religion. In much of the world, access to education as well as participation in new political and professional roles became more inclusive in terms of race, class, gender, and religion. Political and social changes in the 20th century led to changes in the arts, and in the second half of the century, popular and consumer culture became more global. Arts, entertainment, and popular culture increasingly reflected the influence of a globalized society. Consumer culture became globalized and transcended national borders. I wish you the best of luck on your AP exam. I hope you were able to just soak in all that content and good luck.